Hello and welcome back. In today's session, I will uh, discuss Anne's thoughts on the Navy and um, further narrative elements and ideological issues uh, in relation to chapters 1 to 6. This is what Anne has to say about the Navy after uh, hearing her father's comment on it. She suggests that the Navy, I think, uh, who have done so much for us have at least an equal claim with any other set of men for the comforts and all the privileges which any home can give. Sailors work hard enough for the comforts we must all allow. So Anne is defending the Navy and she says that they have an equal right to all the privileges that the other men from other professions enjoy. And uh, she insists that the sailors do work hard uh, to protect the country and in order to safeguard the country. Uh, further figures from the Navy and uh, Mrs. Croft is very interesting uh, in the novel for several reasons. She is a very independent minded woman and she is the wife of Admiral Croft who is going to be the tenant of Kellynch Hall and the narrator says that she's a very well spoken genteel shrewd lady. She seemed to be, um, and she asked more questions about the house and terms and taxes than the admiral himself, and seemed more conversant with business. So we get a lot of uh, characteristics about Mrs. Croft. She's well spoken. She's very sophisticated. She's genteel. Um, she is uh, from a respectable position. She is very shrewd. Um, and, and this is an interesting epithet um, that has been applied to her. She's very uh, perceptive. Uh, and if you remember, Mrs. Clay is referred to as being very clever, but uh, she is referred to as being very shrewd, very smart, uh, and, and very um, perceptive and observant than her husband. Um, and she asks more questions about Kellynch Hall, the place that they are going to let, the terms on which they are going to let, the taxes that they are going to pay, and all the other aspects of the financial transaction. And she seems to be uh, more um, business minded than her husband. This is noticed by uh, Mr. Shepard, the lawyer who has been interested with the job of um, you know, sorting out the affairs of the house. Now, we are introduced to the past of Anne Elliot. Um, she has had a disappointment in love too, just like her eldest sister, Elizabeth Elliot. Now, what is the nature of the romance and its failure uh, for Anne Elliot? The narrator says that he was and that he is uh, Wentworth, Frederick Wentworth, the male protagonist of this particular novel. He was at that time a remarkably fine young man with a deal of intelligence, spirit and brilliancy. And Anne an extremely pretty girl with gentleness, modesty, taste and feeling. Half the sum of attraction on either side might have been enough for he had nothing to do and she hardly had anybody to love. But the encounter of such lavish recommendations could not fail. So we can see the gentle irony, the slight sarcasm as well in the second half of that excerpt. Wentworth was a fine young man. He was very intelligent, he had a lot of spirit, he was brilliant and Anne was extremely pretty, she was gentle, modest and she was sophisticated with a lot of the right sensibility and the narrator says that from here half the attractions that these two people possessed would have been enough for a romance to bloom between the two So, uh, because you know why? because he had nothing to do that he was on leave he was on vacation he had nothing to do and she had none to love there was no suitable young man for Anne Elliot to fall in love with so they had plenty of time uh, between themselves so they easily fell in love you know but she says that how even though half the accomplishments of either would have done um, these lavish recommendations, these lavish recommendations of Wentworth and Anne um, did not fail to produce a romantic narrative, narrative between the two. 
So um, as I just pointed out, there was a lot of leisure and no other alternative uh, for Anne Elliot to be in love with. So these seems to be the reasons for falling in love for the majority of the uh, or folk, for the majority of um, young men and women, nothing to do and nobody else to love. What are the reactions to Anne's romance on the part of Sir Walter Elliot, the father? Uh, so, when they get engaged, um, you know, when Anne and Wentworth come to an understanding between themselves and um, when they inform uh, Sir Walter Elliot as the man is supposed to, as the uh, groom is supposed to, um, the groom is supposed to get the uh, permission of the girl's father. So, when he does that, uh, these are the reactions that um, the couple received. There's great astonishment. Um, so Walter cannot believe his ears. He's astonished that these things could happen, that such kind of engagements can, um, you know, uh, can be formed. He, there, are, there is a great coldness on his part um, and a great silence too. He's extremely cold. He's extremely silent, and he. Um, tells him that he will do nothing for his daughter. He will not offer even a penny uh, as dowry for the daughter and he believes that this is a degrading alliance for the family, for Anne Elliot. This will bring down the status, bring down the reputation of the Elliot family. So this is the set of reaction that Anne receives from her own father. Now. How does Lady Russell react to this romance that took place between Anne and Wentworth eight years prior to the beginning of the novel Persuasion? So this has happened in the past of Anne. Um, so what are the reactions of Lady Russell? She was more tempered and her, she was also very proud but it was a pardonable pride. This is a pardonable pride on the part of Lady Russell and she cautioned Anne not to throw herself away on this penniless uh, young man Wentworth uh, who had no hopes of attaining affluence. He did not show any promise of becoming rich and this was an uncertain profession. The naval profession was uncertain according to Lady Russell and Wentworth is a stranger without any kind of strong alliance, strong alliance in terms of the family networks and he has obviously no fortune. So how is he going to be a successful partner for Anne Elliot? And further uh, objections to uh, this engagement are offered by Lady Russell and she's very, very convincing um, because Anne Elliot is from a, you know, rich family, the family that is, uh, you know, financially strong then eight years ago and then it's from a, uh, from a high status in society and for this girl from this family to marry a nobody um, uh, is, is highly not advisable and that's what she advises uh, Anne Elliot. She says that um, he, she would be sunk by him and Elliot would be sunk by him into a state of most wearing, anxious, youth killing dependence. It must not be if by any fair interference of friendship, any representations from one who had almost a mother's love and mother's rights, it would be prevented. So you can see a lot of uh, psychological uh, arguments are also um, offered in the influence, in the interventions that Lady Russell um, offers to Anne. And look at the language, uh, sunk by him, the metaphor of the sea, the metaphor of the navy. Anne Elliot is like a ship that would be sunk by Captain Wentworth's proposal and eventual uh, marriage to her and she will um, end up in a state of most wearing, exhausting, anxious, youth killing dependence. It will kill off her pretty uh, appearance. It must not be, 
she will not let Anne come to that position if she had any kind of influence over her, any kind of friendship with her. Uh, and in fact, Lady Russell occupies the position of a mother uh, in terms of Anne because Anne's mother, biological mother is no more and Lady Russell acts like a mother for Anne and, and the other uh, daughters. And she says that I have a mother's rights and if, if those rights have any kind of influence, I would prevent this kind of engagement. So what is essentially happen happening here is that Lady Russell is thwarting, breaking off a connection between a girl from a high status family to a man from a lower status in society. So that kind of cross class uh, marriage is broken off by the interventions of Lady Russell. She is more effective than Sir Walter Elliot, the father of Anne. Anne gives way to Lady Russell's advice. She is persuaded by Lady Russell and that connects us um, with the title of this novel, Persuasion. She has been persuaded not to marry uh, Captain Wentworth. Wentworth, what sort of a character is he? He is confident, he believed in his luck and he's witty, he's of sanguine temper and he is fearless. So all this confidence, a, a trust, an implicit trust um, in his, uh, um, you know, ability to be fortunate with all kinds of things in the world, um, his uh, light personality, his, his witty personality, his sense of humor and his optimism and fearlessness doesn't attract him to Lady Russell, it attracts him to Anne. Lady Russell is of a different age and from a different class position. She doesn't um, get influenced by this spirit of youth and adventure represented by Captain uh, Wentworth. And this is the meaning of sanguine, optimistic or very positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. And um, in, in this moment in the novel, he is a man who doesn't have any fortune, but he's optimistic. He's very hopeful that Anne Elliot would marry him. And eventually that optimism is thwarted, but that is the kind of uh, personality that um, he has. Anne Elliot was persuaded to believe the engagement a wrong thing, indiscreet, improper, hardly capable of success and not deserving it. But it was not merely a selfish caution under which she acted in putting an end to it. Had she not imagined herself consulting his good even more than her own, she could hardly have given him up. So once again, the third person narrator is um, evoking the title of the novel, uh, which is the notion of persuasion uh, and that uh, persuasion prevents people from doing certain things which will uh, have ramifications both personal and uh, social. So Anne Elliot was uh, persuaded to believe that this engagement is an utterly wrong decision, improper, this match is an improper, not, a, not an eligible match and it, it will not prosper, that this match will not prosper. But despite all the advice that she has received from Lady Russell, Anne Elliot would not have broken off the engagement with Wentworth if she did not think that she was doing the right thing for Wentworth. She imagined that she was consulting his own good. She believed that she was doing the right thing for Wentworth, the man she was in love with, even more than her, her own well-being. So if she did not think that way she would not have given him up, she would not have broken that engagement. So uh, she believes that if she marries him and she will become a burden, a dead weight on Wentworth who, who will be prevented from concentrating on his professional career. Um, so and again would result in um, both of personal failure and of professional failure. So there are several reasons intertwined in Anne's mind when she decides to break the engagement with Wentworth eight years ago. 
So this romance that happened in the past is a short romance, it's a holiday romance uh, to put it um, very simply, but it has lasting effects on Anne's early loss of bloom and spirits. So now we know why she is no longer pretty, why now she has, um, now we know why she has lost her, um, you know, uh, attractiveness quite early on that this romance, this failed romance is the reason behind her uh, lack of attractiveness. Now, let's talk about the failed courtships that happen in the novel and which are mentioned quite early on in, uh, in the first six chapters. We have to begin with Elizabeth Elliot's courtship. Elizabeth Elliot courtship to Mr. Elliot, which fails because Mr. Elliot marries somebody else. Uh, and then we have Anne's courtship. Courtship means nothing but romance. So we have Anne's romance with Wentworth being broken off uh, by the family. And then we have Charles Musgrove, uh, his courtship with Anne Elliot. So this man, Charles Musgrove, is the eldest son of a neighboring squire and he tried to court Anne after her broken romance with Wentworth, but Anne doesn't accept him. Anne doesn't accept him uh, despite the fact that Lady Russell encourages Anne to marry uh, Charles Musgrove. So once Charles Musgrove has been rejected by Anne, Charles Musgrove marries Mary, Mary Elliot, the second daughter of Sir Walter Elliot. So you can see that there are several splintered courtships, several broken romances at the very beginning of the novel. We, we have seen some dysfunctional families. Sir Walter Elliot's family is a dysfunctional family. Lady Russell, who's kind of um, influencing the Elliot household, she's also dysfunctional in the sense that there is no family for her um, per se. She's just the one uh, person who inhabits her home Russell's Lodge, her home is called uh, the Lodge. And then we have uh, the Musgrove family, which I will introduce um, uh, quite shortly. So there are plenty of dysfunctional families as well as failed courtships or failed romances. So the narrator, the third person narrator sums up the status of Anne in terms of uh, romance. Anne has been forced into prudence in her youth. She learned romance as she grew older, the natural sequel of an unnatural beginning. This is what the third person narrator um, uh, says about Anne. Anne has been forced to be smart. She has been forced into prudence think very carefully to act very, uh, um, you know, in a mature fashion in her youth when she was young. And as she grew, she learned how, how to be romantic. She learned uh, romance. The notion of romance came to her when she grew older. And that is the natural sequel of an unnatural being, the unnatural being uh, her failure. To be successfully romantic. So the sequel, the sequel is um, the novel, Persuasion, that we have. And the prequel is that failed romance eight years ago with uh, Captain, uh, with Wentworth. Now we have uh, seen some failed courtships. Now let's have a look at some potentially dangerous courtship plots within quotation that are uh, about to germinate. And that is between Sir Walter and Mrs. Clay, who has uh, come home um, to her father's um, house with two children. She has had an unprosperous marriage. And um, she possessed in an acute mind, Mrs. Clay possessed in an acute mind, an assiduous, pleasing manners 
infinitely more dangerous attractions than any merely personal might have been. Mrs. Clay is seen as a dangerous woman because she's very, very uh, sharp and she's also very, very pleasing, assiduous. She's in consistently, she's working hard at pleasing Sir Walter uh, Elliot and this combination is uh, deadly. Um, that's what the other characters feel, especially Anne Elliot. Anne Elliot sees what is happening right in uh, front of her. She sees that there is a potential courtship brewing between Sir Walter and the widower, the father, and uh, Mrs. Clay. And she tries to warn Elizabeth Elliot, but Elizabeth Elliot would not take the advice. She's very convinced that Mrs. Clay is very unattractive and her father has been noticing that unattractiveness, say for example, the freckles that Mrs. Clay has. Um, and, and therefore, she believes, Elizabeth believes that this courtship will come to nothing. In fact, there is no courtship at all. Let's now look at Mary Musgrove. Mary Musgrove is the second daughter uh, of um, Sir Walter Elliot. She constantly believes that she is unwell. She's a hypochondriac. And whenever she thinks that she is unwell, she was in the habit of claiming Anne when anything was the matter. And um, Elizabeth Elliot is quite willing to send Anne uh, to help out Mary Musgrove. And she says, then I'm sure Anne had better stay for nobody will want her in Bath. The family is moving to Bath. That's the place of um, uh, residence uh, for the Elliot family. They are quitting College Hall and they're going to move to a house in Bath. And they have decided to drop Anne behind uh, because Mary Musgrove is ill and Anne has to look after uh, Mary Musgrove. So you can see one sister ditching Anne, the other claiming Anne for selfish reasons, the other sister being Mary Musgrove. And this is the illustration of Anne visiting Mary Musgrove. And Mary Musgrove is lying on the sofa, imagining herself to be very, very ill. And when she sees Anne, she says, so you are come at last. And, and she uh, believes that nobody is really looking after her. Nobody spends time with her. The husband is away hunting and um, she seems to be all on her own and Anne has come to her rescue. Mary Musgrove is a woman who has no resources for solitude. She cannot be on her own and inheriting a considerable share of the Elliot self-importance was very prone to add to every other distress that are fancying herself neglected and ill-used. So she has several faults. Um, firstly, she thinks that she is always ill and secondly, she thinks that people are mistreating her, um, that she has been ill-used and that she has been neglected by the people around her and most importantly, she has the Elliot self-importance, the Elliot ego is embedded in um, Mary Musgrove and that is the reason behind uh, her imagining others to be mistreating her. Thank you for watching. I'll continue in the next session.